first day of the rest of our life, and today we are blessed to be part of the Light, Lighthouse Project, which is a schus uh, to hopefully be able to inspire and be inspired by more and more people, Baruch Hashem, who want to grow and who want to change their lives one day at a time, because that's, that's what it's about, that's what life is about, taking every day and starting over, taking every day and starting one day at a time to begin your morning, to begin your life with positivity, with love, with only speaking good things, only listening to good things as we start off. It's Minna Shemayim, because today we're starting day one. Baruch Hashem, we finished purity of speech for the second time uh, yesterday, so now we're starting day one. It actually says day one. So day one is Baruch Hashem, that the purity of speech was machavan to day one. And now one day I'm not going to stop speaking Lashon Hara, but today is my first day of not speaking Lashon Hara. And we know the language of a person has the power to ruin a business, it has the power to break a shidduch, it has the power to tear a family apart, the way a person talks, it has the power to destroy relationships between men and women, husband and wife. Which weapon has such power? Words. A words, words can kill and words can give life. Words have the power, just like it has the power to break a shidduch, it has the power to tear families, businesses apart. It also has the power to heal a broken heart. It has the power to brighten a lonely life, and it has the power to inspire a stray soul to nurture and teach. Yes, when used properly, words can cause unimaginable joy. It is our choice to utilize our most special gift properly, the gift of speech. So as we start off our first day, our day one for all of us, then Hashem should help us as we're learning the Sefer Chavetz Chaim, starting it again, purity of speech, day one, page 17, that every day we try and learn Hilchas Lashon Hara, and every day we have to remind ourselves, that's the key. The key is reminding yourself, which we're going to talk about today in the Silsi Sharm, is to remind ourselves of what we already know, to remind ourselves to bite our lip, to remind ourselves not to say what we sometimes want to say, or what we don't want to say. Halach and practice, the halach and practice is, Lashon Hara is a derogatory speech about a fellow Jew, or a speech that can harm another Jew. That's what Lashon Hara is. Lashon Hara is speech that can hurt somebody else. Number two, something that a lot of people don't know, Lashon Hara, you're not allowed to say, even if it is true. People think it's true so I could say it? No. That is what Lashon Hara is. Number three, if the Lashon Hara is not true, then besides speaking Lashon Hara, I'm doing another two things that are very negative things. Number one is I'm lying. And number two, I'm being <coughs> motzi shame ra. I'm creating a ra, something bad that doesn't even exists. So I am going ahead and I am, it's even worse than Lashon Hara. And next thing, the Aveira of Lashon Hara applies even if you are talking to one person. So if you tell one person about another person, even though there are three people involved, that's Lashon Hara. However, the more listeners there are, the worse it is. Why? Because A, you are causing more people to listen and to accept it. So the more people who you're telling it to, the more um, people listen to it. And the second thing, because the person you're talking about will be more degraded because a lot of people know about it. If one person knows about this thing, okay. But if when three, four, or five people know about it, the more people know about something negative, the worse it is for the person. Now, let's say you have two people who say Lashon Hara, right? You have a guy who goes ahead and says, ah, Yankel went ahead and he went ahead and, uh, and um, you know, stole this thing. And then another guy goes, yeah, 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 
your uncle went ahead and stole this thing. So that's even worse. Why? Because then it's something that more people repeat the Lashon Hara and more people will accept it. Because one of the things in Lashon Hara is not to accept when someone says something. But if I say something and another person says something and then another person says something, then there's, it's more likely to be heard. Okay. Sefer Chavetz Chaim, Hilchas Lashon Hara, Klal Aleph, Aleph, Klal Hey, Ches. Okay. That's from the introduction of purity of speech. Question, comments on that? Question, comments? No questions? No comments? Okay. Okay, I guess I'll, I'll make the comment. The comment is, is that a person has to be very careful when he's with other people um, and how quick, how quick a person can jump in with somebody else when they're saying Lashon Hara. Because the natural thing that a person wants to do is he wants to get approval by other people, and he wants people to approve of him. So subconsciously, in, in a split second, a person can go ahead when he's sitting with other people, and someone says, ah, you know, this guy, this and this and that. And all you got to do, all you have to do is jump on the bandwagon by saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all you have to do is nod your head in approval of what the guy next to you is saying negative, and then what that does is, is it ramps up the Lashon Hara even stronger. So a person has to be so, so careful. That's why we have to dive into Hashem to help us not to be in circumstances and not to be hanging around with people who go ahead and talk Lashon Hara. That's the hardest thing to do. Once you do that, we're going to learn that in Yitzhak Shem and Prisha soon, is that once a person learns to stay away and stay out of the ring, once a person stays out of the ring of the problem, that will solve all of his problems. It's always once I'm in that situation, once you find yourself sitting with the Hevra, once I find myself having the conversation with that person that I know is going to speak Lashon Hara, so then you're sort of stuck already. Okay? Hashem should help us. We should all be Zoha. Us and all the Jewish people should be Zoha not to talk any Lashon Hara today, not to be Motsi Shemra, not to put ourselves and not to be amongst any person who is going to feed any negativity. Right? Each of us have enough negativity that we're trying to battle and we want to be more positive. We want to be loving. So we don't want to be around any person who's going to ignite and, and um, encourage us to not see the good and not talk good or hear good. Amen. Us and all the Jewish people. Amen. Okay, let's continue. We're actually beginning a new parak. See, it's Minish Shemayim, Yosef. See how Minish Shemayim it is. Today, we're, we started day one. Right? Yosef said, okay, today we're going to start out with the, with the Lighthouse Project. And um, today we started day one um, in Lashon Hara. And now we're starting a new parak, parak. Yud Beis and Mesil Shisharim. And Parak Yud Beis and Mesil Shisharim is really the end of a, of a, um, Mesil Shisharim is split into two halves. The first half, as we're going to learn in the next Parak, is the half, meaning until now, we've all been learning how to become a tzaddik. <coughs> the next half of the Sefer, which we're going to start <clears throat> maybe today, but probably tomorrow, is how to become a chassid. And when I say how to become a chassid, it has nothing to do with, um, you know, long payas and a beard. It's, it's being a chassid as somebody who is serving Hashem beyond the letter of the law, which we're going to learn about. But this Sefer, until now, until Parak Yud Gimel, is all teaching us how to be a tzaddik. Now, the Mesil Zicharim says in Yud Beis, and I'm just going to quickly go over all of the elements of Nikias. Now, remember, what Nikias was, what we spoke about in Nikias, is, I'm, I'm a little self-conscious. I, I don't have to look at anything, right? I can do whatever. I'm saying I'm not. It's not there. Right, okay, beautiful. I'm not. 
saying. I, I need to like, I get a little, yeah, right, exactly. Okay, so, so Nikias, the way it goes is like this. Nikias, Nikias is awareness. The reason that a person needs awareness is because we've said many times, denial is don't even notice, we got the N in there, don't even notice I am lying. So when a person is in denial, he doesn't even know I am, notice that I am lying. So when a person learns all these things that I'm working on, that's one of the challenges that people have when they get married. Because you were a, a, in, in yeshiva, you were a big tzaddik. And when the shatkin called, and the whatever called all your roommates, and everyone's t making you to be the biggest tzaddik, which is true, gesundheit, you were a tzaddik in yeshiva. But then you get married, and suddenly you become a Russia. How could it be? Because it's all your wife's fault. Right? No, it's not your wife's fault. The pshat is, is that it's awareness. You don't have as much awareness when a person doesn't learn Musr. That's why people don't like, like to learn Musr. That's why people don't like to talk about things. Why? Let's not go there. I don't want to talk about it. But the truth is, the more a person talks about something, the more a person right, gets clear about something. I was just talking, Mamish, to a, to a very, very holy Jew. And he was talking to me in Avodah Hashem. And he was telling me what a holy big tzaddik to told him. And what this holy big tzaddik told him is that when you're working on something, you're working on becoming a bigger person, a better person, write down very clearly. This is Mamish what this person told me. Write down very clearly why I'm doing what I'm doing. What are my goals? And every day, when you are feeling a little bit low about it, or you're feeling a little bit pacific about it, take out your paper and remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing. All awareness. The more awareness a person has on something, the more he's able to battle it. As we've said many times, the main thing is to keep the main thing the main thing. What does that mean? When you go ahead and you say, I'm going to be happy, I want to work on happiness, then you think about happiness during the day. When a person says, I'm going to be more confident, you think about confidence. When a person says, I want to accept my anxiety, what happens? And he says that every day. He puts on, right, a lot of people, they say you put on your, right all over your house, all over your mirror. I mean, all over your house, it's hard to do that. But maybe when you're, you know, younger, whatever it is, you could. You know, all these positive quotes about life, it makes a difference. Why? Because that's called awareness. We live in a world where we are numb we are numb, right? I love everybody who's watching and who's into <coughs> basketball. I even knew that, I even know what, what, what's holding. But all that does to a person, again, I'm not telling a person not to watch basketball, even if a person's what, and, and I mean it, believe Shalom. But be aware that all you're doing when you're doing that is you are numbing your awareness of life. You're numbing your awareness of who you are. When a person gets drunk, all he's doing is he's numbing. He's numbing his awareness because it's too painful for, for me to be aware of things. But it's the opposite because the more a person trains himself to be aware and the more a person is happy, and this goes into a person being in reality. When a person lives in reality, he's happy. And reality is awareness of what I have to work on. So the Ramchal listed for us, <clears throat> how many things? 13 things I have over here, 14 things, sorry, 15 things. The Ramchal in this last parak, Yud, Yud Aleph, listed 15 things that we have to be aware of constantly. 15 things, all the way from Gezel, all the way down to Taiva of money and covet, which is where we ended off. And the more a person can be aware of that on a consistent basis, and this is what the Ramchal says, awareness that I have to work on something. Awareness in the 12-step program. I don't know how many are so familiar with it, but one of the things of the 12-step program when people suffer from addictions, which is something that people are suffering more and more and more from addictions, one of that is, is that every day, every day a person has to be aware, every day, it's not, you can't forget that I have this problem. 
the more a person is aware that I have this problem, I'm lazy, and when you go to sleep at night, you say, I have laziness to me. That's fine. I'm aware that I'm lazy. So what am I going to do to battle my laziness? That's what a person has to think. And the more aware you are of these things, the problem is, again, our society, especially Baruch Hashem, with our devices, is that it keeps you distracted. Distracted is the opposite of awareness. Distraction means I'm not aware. I'm aware for about a half a second. Right? We're in a generation of ADD. What does that mean? I'm only aware for about five seconds, and then I'm off flowing somewhere else. That's why they're legalizing. They will. Give it a couple of years. I don't know how long it's going to take. Marijuana. Why? It's legal already. It's legal already. No, but not in the whole world. Not in all of America. In Toronto, it's legal. What? The whole Canada. There you go. Good for Canada. Right? Lack of awareness. Right? Exactly. And we get excited. People get excited of, right? That what? Money making business. Money making business. Exactly. It's all about the money. That what? What's the shot? Because what it does for a person is it keeps him un- aware of what he's doing because it's too painful to be aware but that's a lie it's not too painful to be aware it's too painful to be unaware it's too painful for a person to live a life anxiety comes when a person is hiding from who he is that's where anxiety is anxiety is I have so much cocos I have so much power but I'm not being true to myself I'm not being true to myself because I'm worried about other people, which is a normal thing that we all have. Yes? You know, I was thinking that all these things, like the numbing stuff, having a phone, and being on it a lot, it just like distracts us from being ourselves, like looking at ourselves. So we can't even live our, with ourselves. Like Correct. Numbers. Correct. How do you start to live with yourself? You're asking? <laughs> you, you're living with yourself, Shimmy. Yeah. Should we foul? Yeah. 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 What does that mean, Shimmy Klaus? You can give Dalilam. Anyone who's anyone who's here, anyone who's here, <clears throat> and anyone who's here consistently. And when I say you're here, it doesn't just mean that your body's here. That's a good start. It's a very good start that your body is in this shear every day. But the more you come here, the more you become aware. The more you become aware because because it's, it's talking about things. It's talking about what, why is therapy so popular nowadays? Why are therapists, in my days, you'd be embarrassed to even say the word therapist. Therapist would be like, like you're in a mental hospital. I'm, I'm being serious. Now you're going to stand in probation. Right, exactly. Well, especially in our yeshiva, Baruch Hashem. Baruch Hashem, I'm proud to say that. But why are therapists so popular? Because people need to talk. Because when you talk, you become aware. When you keep everything inside, it's all in your head, it's all here, you're totally confused. You start talking, then you become aware. If I start talking about something, yes, Shai? So, um, for the past 5,000 years, 700 and whatever, people didn't really have therapists. They were just, maybe it was inside, but they... Well, they didn't have this. They were disregarded. No, they didn't have this. So when I was in a car with some, you guys don't realize... When I, when I was your age, and I was in a car with my friends, know what we did? We spoke to each other. We talked to each other, exactly. That's what we did. Not because we necessarily wanted to speak to each other, but because what else are you doing? Nowadays, right, someone sent out a picture. It was a great picture on that. I forgot. I saw it. Sometimes I, you know, sometimes I quickly scroll down, and a picture catches where it was four of the guys in yeshiva you know, standing, it wasn't a, it was just, you guys know what I'm talking about? Like each one was sitting there. It was a great shot of four guys standing in a row, you know. You go ahead and you look and, in, 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 you know, when people are sitting together. That's what it is. So people aren't talking about things. There's no awareness. There's no awakeness, right? Back to that, wake me up when it's all over. That was that, was that guy, how many millions... Someone can Google it now. How many, how many hits? Is it a billion? Did he hit? What's his name? A billion hits? I don't know how many hits he got. He overdosed. He overdosed. I know he overdosed. That's the point. <laughs> Wake me up when it's all over. He overdosed. What was he doing? He was numbing himself. Why? Because he's the one who said, Wake me up when it's all over, which means I don't want to be up now. 
I want to be sleeping now. Wake me up when it's all over. No, don't wake me up when it's all over. No one's waking me up. Okay, yeah, no, the point is not that we're not trying to mock him. Adaraba, I, I thank him. He's, he's, taught, he's taught me so much. He's taught me so much that that's what the world is screaming. The world is screaming, uh-oh, I have a problem. Oh, when I smoke, when I drink, when I have another outlet, when I, now I can go through the list. When I have a boundary problem, gezel. Arias is, I'm running after women <clears throat> to give me my, my pleasure, my, to numb me as well. It's the same thing, right? Eating, I'm just going to eat whatever I want to eat. I'm not aware of what I eat. I'm going through the list. Gezel, Arias, Machos, Asuras. Verbal abuse. Verbal abuse. You put people down. You say whatever comes to your mouth, whatever comes to your mind to say something. That's the same thing. I'm not aware of what I'm talking about. I'm not aware of who I am, what I'm doing, destroying somebody's life. How many people could say that their lives were destroyed? How many people could say that their lives were destroyed either by, by somebody who put them down Verbal abuse. There you go. There you go. Number five, bad advice, looking only out for myself. Lush and horror, something we talk about. Sinna, hatred. There's nothing wrong with saying. It says, Don't hate your friend in your heart. Talk it out. We, sp we spoke about the mitzvah of listening to someone who's venting <coughs> about somebody who he hates. When you vent and you talk it out, you, you, you get clarity. You don't keep it, it doesn't burn inside. Then he says, Sheker, keeping your word, is my word a word? Sheker, being a liar, Chil Hashem, Shabbos Yomtev. And then the last one, two, three, four that we said was being an ego maniac. It's all about me. Life is all about me, 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 me. Right? I told you guys that, right? They had a poll, this was 20, 30 years ago. What, the, what, the, what the, the word that was the most used on the telephone, this is 20, 30 years ago I heard, 20 years ago I heard this. The most common word used on the telephone was I. That's 20, 30 years ago. I, right? I guess they had a, they, they, they had a uh, computerized way to figure it out, I don't know. I was me, 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 me. That's ego. I added about 15 years ago, 10 years ago. I said, so what is it now? Now it's, I'm not talking about now, I'm talking about 10 years ago. I added it's, right, is that it's I and not you. It used to be just me, me, me. Now everything is me, but not you, right? The President of the United States, well, you're going to see when, the, when the, well, they'll start the debates, right? They didn't have this in my day. All the debates have nothing to do with policy. All the debates are character, um, what's the word? Character, yeah, there's a word for it. Character assassination, thank you. Character assassination, right? What does that do? What does that do? The whole entire world is me and not you. Because I can't handle it if you're also doing well. Even if I'm doing well, I want to be the only one. And the last thing, oh, cos, anger, of course. Kinna, jealousy, and we said taiva of covered and mammon. So how does a person keep aware? That's what this chapter, Parakud Beis. So how do I stay aware? So the Ramchal says one of the most beautiful things. Hasmadus hakriya b'derechacham. That's why it's such a chizik for what we do here every day. Why do we learn the Silsi Sharm every day? Why do we talk about Lashon Hara every day? Why don't we get a little bit more creative? Why don't we learn Lashon Hara one day? Learn about Simcha another day. Learn about this thing. Why are we doing the same thing more or less over and over? So Baruch Hashem, that's what the Ramchal says. Baruch Shakivanu, we're machavin to the Ramchal. What does the Ramchal say? He says, the way for a person to stay aware is by continuously talking about it. Continuously reading about it. If you read a daily dose of Lashon Hara every day, if you read the Mesil Sisharim and you come to Shir every day, I guarantee any person who does this every day that it changes 
your life. Ask Dovey Sauer. Dovey Sauer sits in this chair. Dovey Sauer. Dovey Sauer sits here every day, quietly in the corner for the entire year. It has transformed him. Not because, oh, it's such a great shear. It is, Baruch Hashem, we have an amazing Eilam. No, for real. But it's awareness. It's changing. It's growth. It's not like, it's not like a person pops in, okay, I'll pop in to hear a shear once in a while. That's great. I'm not taking away. But it's the muscle of the guy who tries on the shoe in the shoe store, and it hurts. And what does the guy, the shoe store man, tell you? Where is, uh, you suppose out of here? But what does he tell you, anyone who's worked in a shoe store? Wear it, wear it, get comfy in it. Wear it for a couple weeks. After a week or so, it'll get comfortable. So what does he do? It hurts him, so what does he do? He puts it on the shelf. And then a week later, he puts it on, what happens? It hurts again. It hurts again. So when you're not, a, you're aware. And then you become unaware. And then you're aware. You're unaware, it hurts every time. But if a person consistently, 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 and again, from Matis Monk, it's not every, it doesn't have to be, it's your persistence to say, I'm going to do it, I'm going to become aware again today, even if I wasn't aware yesterday, I'm going to start again, I'm going to do it again, I'm going to try again, Lashon Hara, I failed yesterday, I'm going to try again, I wasn't aware of this yesterday, I'm going to try again. And that's what he says. He says, Laman Chadesh Besichloi Zechirasam. To awaken the newness of what I already know. Everybody here knows that they're going to die. Everybody here knows what life is about. Just what happens? The social media, the phones, distractions distract a person to go ahead and worry about everything but my life. And everything. Yitzi Atzadik over here sent in, after ye- yesterday's shear, Yitzi Grunwald, another person. Yeah. Another person. Yeah. 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 Another person who's been sitting here every day consistently. You want to just pull out the quote? He sent me yesterday after we said it. Listen to the quote that he sent. Right? I was saying it from, from uh, I forgot who said it, whether it was Ramosha Feinstein, that everybody says, time is money. Time is money. And Ramosha says, no, money is time, which means where, where am I wasting my time? Where am I spending? What's the quote? Uh, be picky with who you invest your time in. Be picky, one, one more time. Be picky in who you invest your time in. Be picky in who you invest your time with and what you invest your time in. Be picky. Don't just say, oh, I'm, I'm spending time doing this. And what's the last one? Wasted time is worse than wasted money. Wasted time is worse than wasted money. Just like a person wouldn't flush down the toilet $100, what are you flushing down the toilet an hour? And people could say, and again, I'm not, I'm not judging because I'm not, I'm not, I didn't grow up like this, but if people could spend, like we said yesterday, 35 hours on average just watching television. That's not talking about, someone said that's watching television. That's not even, that's not even going online. That's not even, you know, browsing, you know, uh, whatever, the social media, or a person just looking <coughs> to be distracted from awareness. So a person's going ahead and he's spending his precious life. You're spending your precious life. And that's what he says. A person has to be aware every day. Laman Chadis, he says, You will be inspired. People say, I'm not inspired. Well, let me ask you a question. You're not inspired. How much time have you put into being inspired? What are you waiting for? I'm not inspired. I only get inspired when I drink. I only get inspired when, I, when, I, when someone inspires me. What about working on getting inspired? What about a person listening to motivational speeches? What about a person waking up in the morning and putting on his wall, what is my purpose today? What about a person being aware? So says the Ramchal. He says, Vadai. And I trust the Ramchal. I trust the Ramchal. Who else am I trusting? Who else do we trust? Baruch Hashem, we have a Ramchal that tells us, if a person goes ahead and does this consistently, I guarantee you, you will be inspired. Question, comments? Yes, Dovid. Does the Ramchal talk about humility or all? Is it the same thing? Yeah, yeah, we'll get there. We'll get to humility. Humility is a whole chapter. Hopefully we'll get to it 
Soon, it's at the end of the Sefer to be humble. Awareness and humility are two different things. Awareness, good, good point, Ovi. <laughs> Awareness, correct. Ah, oh, it's easier. Go ahead. <laughs> He didn't know you were here. Uh, yeah. Correct. Awareness. 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 Awareness is definitely. Awareness. Awareness is definitely a step in humil- in humility. The question is, what I'm aware of. That's already humility. What am I aware? What am I focusing on? When I'm focusing on certain things, I could become more humble. But yes, if a person's aware. He's aware then that, that that is a step to step outside of himself to say, okay, who am I? Why am I doing what I'm doing? What's going on? How come I keep on getting the same results? Why am I keep on getting the same results? Yes, Shaya. So if, if phones and all these things that we uh, use, uh, we, we don't use them to escape. It's not what we're thinking of at, at the beginning. Right. right. We're not trying to escape. Right. right. At the end of the day, it is something that numbs us. Right. Um, and it's something that's very addictive. And it's right. That everyone has. What's one suggestion the Rebbe can offer everybody on how to break the wheel? Break right. The okay. That's a, so. That's a great question. Beautiful, great Shaya. Question. Yeah. Go. Yep. Yeah. Shimon the Lang. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's what I said. Yeah. I said for my suggestion, what works for me is that I realize that the problem is in the morning and the evening, I start the day on my phone, I end the day on my phone. So for me personally, I don't check my, I try not to check my phone myself until I come to Shoppers. So therefore I start the day thinking about myself. I don't look at others, what's happening in the world. And when I go to sleep as well, I end up doing something else, reading, whatever it is. So I'm also focusing on how I go to sleep and my, my next Wow, show. beautiful, beautiful. Very good. Now, now I, wanna, I wanna say something also on what Shai is saying. It's not the phone. It's not the phone, and it's not social media. That, that's not the problem. The world will always find other ways to distract you because that's the goal of the Yetzer Hara. That's the goal of this world is distract me from me. Distract me. Right, I saw a quote. I just got this. My son just bought me this quote book from Tzadikim, and it says... People try and understand God and to believe in themselves. Believe in God and learn to understand yourself. Now, why is that so powerful? Because Rabbi Yisrael Salanta, we said this yesterday or two days ago also, another quote that he says is that a person can live on this world for 70 years and not know himself. So it's not the phones. It's not the pot. It's not the drinks. It's not the... The tithes, that's not what it is. It's a distraction from me getting to know who I am. And based on who I am, I can learn to live the life that Hashem gave me. And the entire thing that the world wants us, and this is just the way of the world, wants us to forget, and wants us to forget one thing. Forget the fact that you're going to die Forget the fact that life is short. Forget the fact that you have a purpose, a massive purpose in this world. And forget the fact that you are someone who can leave this world the most incredible place and you have such power to make changes in this world and within yourself. Yes, Shimmy. Now, uh, with what Shai said just now, um, we usually go on Right. Correct. The God. Right. Correct. But it's it, it, it's an escape. But the question a person has to ask himself is that what what comes first? What comes first? The lack of I guarantee you, someone who's training for Olympics, a gold medalist, that their goal at 14 years old, and they have a goal. Right. Their parents tell them, you you know, just like Uncle Bob. And just like grandfather Bob, or just like great uncle this one was a uh, Olympic gold medalist, 
in, you know, the, uh, you know, the swim of this, I guarantee you that kid is not spending so much time on their phone. Why not? He's got the same phone that his, that his neighbor has just because he's on a mission. When you're on a mission, when you're on a mission, you don't got time for your phone. Okay, your phone could help you with your mission. Our problem is not the phone. Our problem is we don't have a mission. It's like people say, I can't get up in the morning. The problem is that you can't, that the problem is not that you can't get up in the morning. The problem is you don't have a purpose for your day that's strong enough to get you out of bed. As we said, right? Purpose is the greatest alarm clock for a person to have. So it's not the alarm clock, it's not the phone, it's the mission. Yes, Michal? Then the mission becomes a distraction. I'm sorry? Then the mission will just become a distraction. Halavai, an obsession. Halavai, your mission. Why is that a distraction? That's not, no, no, a workaholic is not on a mission. A workaholic is also distracted. I'm talking about a mission in life that this is my goal in life. Halavai, a person can be obsessed and distracted by, yeah, if you have an Olympic gold medalist, I respect that. That person has a mission that they want to reach X, Y, and Z, and they're going to put all of their power into it. Even if you take a guy who's going to have a mission that I want to become ten, worth $10 million, $20 million, I respect that also. I respect that also. And he works like a dog. Day in, day night, he reads books about it. He's up, he's getting jobs, he's humble towards it. That's also something great, because he has a mission. And I guarantee you someone like that is not going to be on social media. right? That's the thing that Yoshua Ben Eli said. We said this the other day. Why are there no commercials? Right, Yoshua Ben Eli, right, exactly. Yoshua, we miss you. Right? Yoshua Ben Eli, I remember him telling me this, right? You guys remember this. Why are there no commercials? Michal, you know this one? Why are there no Lamborghini commercials? Because anyone watching television can't afford it. Who's watching television? You can't afford it. Yeah, it's Dovey. Exactly. And what? And what correct. A lot of people, you start with the what first, what the product is, as opposed to the why. They're not really sure of why we're really connected right. to it. So a lot of companies, this is how they sell their stuff. Why is it that we, have, we, want, to, we want to change the world? We want to, how do we do this? We have, exactly. we have products that look exactly. good. And, and, and what is it? It happens to be a computer process is good. But anyone right. that actually looks for the core value of what, what it really is that they want a real computer, you don't see them walk around with, uh, with uh, an Apple. You know, and then you forget even companies like Dell and other companies that have, that make, their, it's crazy that you wouldn't buy an MP3 player from the company that makes computers. But since now we want to buy it from the company whose vision is all about, you know, let's do the thing that's quicker, that looks nicer, and then have to be an add-on that the, the main objective of the device is for the computer. It happens to be it's a computer also. It's crazy that you're really into finding logistics and the real thing of, I really want a computer, and I really want, you know... Right, a right. We get distracted. Right, it's distracted, correct. Beautiful, Dovi, beautiful. Well said, beautiful. And, and how many of us, how many of us, and again, I'm not, I'm not knocking, it's not about knocking, you know, like we say, we're not knocking any, we're not knocking anyone or anything. This is awareness. This alone is awareness. The awareness is that I need more awareness, more consistent awareness in my life. Uh -huh. People want to just get busy. People just want to do things. People just want to feel accomplished. But you're not going to feel accomplished if you don't have the why. You're not going to feel accomplished if you're walking around. Why are you in yeshiva? What's your goal to be in yeshiva? Imagine if a person every day of his being in yeshiva clarified, why am I here? What is my goal? What am I trying to do? Why am I here? What is my goal? Every day a person did that. Yes, from Sim Karaba. Can you tell him to just keep it down or something? Or come in or just three? You want to just tell him for a second? You can um, tell him just, uh, yeah. So there's this great book that everyone might have me called Atomic Habits. Yeah. And you've heard of it? It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Anyways, um, so people are saying like a lot of deep things about this phone thing and like also like the rabbi the tradition. I just like for the more simplistic like, you know, like emergency like go to. He just says that if you bring your apples home and put them in your fridge on the bottom of the fridge, 
then they'll spoil. And if you have your cookies and the cookies are on the counter, then you'll eat them. But if you put your cookies in the bottom of your fridge and your apples in a jar on your counter, <laughs> and he actually did that, and it was like, so I'm just saying, like, I, right. I'm just saying, like, for myself, like, if, if you have a Mishnah or a Moses of others in your pocket, when you're waiting for the bus, that's what you take out. Beautiful. If you have, like, you know, like, the latest, like, new Lion King real life action, like, you know, thing on your phone, of course you're going to take that out. Like, it's kind of like, don't work. Setting yourself up. Don't work. Um, don't work harder. Don't work, work harder. harder smarter. Harder. Like, yeah, if you keep, if you keep your, your. Beautiful. You know, like well said. On a more simplistic well said. Basis. Right. A lot of people say very good. A lot, a lot of people say is they leave their phones in the dorm when they come to the base medrash. Why? It just makes it easier for them. That's all. Easy. It's just easier. Lazy. We're going to learn about that in in precious uh, Tzvi. Uh, yes. Um, uh, Everyone, pay attention. Back very. Back to the eye. Yes. Okay, the Ramchal, the Ramchal says, we're going to end off with these two statements of the parak as we start, Amir Tashem. We're going to start on the next uh, level of, of tzaddik to chassid. Says the Ramchal, he says, Ki ein adam nolad chacham. A person is not born a chacham. You're not born knowing things. The e efshir lo ladas is a call. Don't expect yourself to know everything, especially when you're 18 years old, 19 years old, 20 years old, and especially when, let's say, you didn't do much in high school, or you did much in high school, whatever, whatever it might be, but I'm saying you're not at the age where you can have expectations that I'm not happy, I don't know my future, I don't know how to deal with my anxiety, I don't know how to stop this, I don't know how to, how to stop that. What do you expect from yourself? What do you expect from yourself? We're just, exactly, we're young. Everyone here is so young. And don't expect yourself to have the answers. Sometimes the more a person doesn't have the answers. Do you have that, Michal, do you have that quote I sent you from that book? I want to read that. We'll end off with that because it's Mamish this. The thing I sent you a few days ago. Do you have a picture of that that I can read that? I want to, we're going to end off with that because that's really what he's saying. Ki ain adam nolad chacham. Don't expect yourself to know everything, and you have to teach yourself every day. The person has to teach himself. Thank you very much. Yeah. Is that good? Beautiful. How do I make it? Okay, one second. When we say out loud what we don't know, it increases the likelihood that someone who does know will come and offer help. The single most powerful lesson I have ever learned in my life is that I don't have to know all the answers. And when I don't, I don't have to pre pretend that I do know all the answers. There was a time in my career that I thought I had to know all the answers because I was running the account or running the business. <coughs> the problem was, it was a lie. No one knows all the answers. No one has perfect clarity. Svi, you listening? I had to learn that lesson the hard way. As soon as I mustered the courage to state out loud what I didn't know or understand or ask for help or accept it when it was offered, my career completely turned around. It turns out that there were always people who wanted to help. They just didn't know I needed that. Mm -hmm. Now what's incredible, thank you, Michal. 
What's incredible is Mamish the Ramchal. That's what the Ramchal is saying. You don't have to know everything. You have to learn things. And when you say, I don't know something, or you say, I don't know what my future brings, great. Shkoach, who does know? I don't know what I'm doing for the rest of my life, okay? I don't know my connection to Hashem and Torah and why this, uh, okay, no problem. I don't know how I'm going to make it financially with this, with that, with that, uh, etc. Okay, that's fine. I don't know how to deal with my roommate. I don't know how to deal with my, with my tivus. I don't know how to deal with whatever it might be. And a person is humble, like Dovi says, you're humble to that. Says the Ramchal, you're not born knowing things. We're here to learn it every day and all the time. And that's the beauty of being in Eretz Yisrael, being in Yeshiva, specifically in this Yeshiva, Baruch Hashem, where we're blessed to be proud, to be proud that we struggle, to be proud that I have challenges. There's nothing embarrassing to say, I don't know something, I have anxiety, I have problems, I have this. Well, that's, what, that's what life is about. That's what life is about. Hashem should help each and every one of us. Yes? Um, just a quick uh, insight that I just thought of. Yeah. Um, to help the people out that don't actually, um, that aren't actually okay with being in the and being in the unknown, like not knowing what the future holds. If you knew what the future holds, then that just literally sucks out all the excitement out of life, out of out of the unknown. And honestly, when a person keeps an open, when a person doesn't know, I feel like that leaves that many do- more doors open. Well said. And your mind just well said, Natano. Well, well said. Well said. It is so true what Natano is saying. Because people, I'm not going to get into this so deep now, people who suffer from anxiety, and, and all of us do, it's all about your future. If you want terror, if you want anxiety and fear, get a future, that's what they say. Because your future is what teaches you what to be afraid of and what Natal is saying. Oh, this is what's going to happen in the future. No, no, it's not. How do you know that's going to happen? How many times is it that we imagined something in our minds and it's going to be something, and then when you got there, it has no connection at all? Probably every time. So like Natanel is saying, now it doesn't, people get nervous because they say, oh, but then that, that means I don't plan for my future? Absolutely not. Plan for your future. Sit down, spend an hour a week, spend an hour a day if you want. Set aside time and say, I'm planning my future. And the rest of the day, I guarantee you, you'll be relaxed. The reason people are not relaxed is because they really don't really set aside the proper time to plan their future. Not to imagine the dreadness of my future. No, not to imagine, but to make a plan that this is what I want to do, this is what I want to do for my career, this is what I'm going to try and do, I'll read books about what I'm good at, I'll speak to other people, what they suggest that I'm good at, but when a person is able, like Natanel is saying, to live today and to live now and to be open to possibilities and doors opening, he is much more powerful and he's going to open himself up for much more creativity. And, and Hashem, Hashem has a much greater imagination of the beauty that we can live than we do. So don't get stuck in your thoughts of what it is. Yeah, someone, yes, Yosef. I was thinking like um, a lot of these like sports players who get these like 10 year, $400 million contracts, like the beginning of the season, and there's like mad, even though they know their future, they're, they're locked in for 10 years, but there's like mad pressure every at bat, every pitch, every, every throw, that every shot that they do, everything's like on them. And not necessarily does that mean that all oh, because they're locked into this huge contract that everything's going to be good, you know? Beautiful, so, right? Like, it's true. It's true. Like the tunnel saying, like Yosef saying, is that knowing your future takes away the, the, the journey of life and the, and the, and the experience. Okay, Hashem should help each and every one of us. We should all be Zoha. Really amazing. Amazing. We should be Zoha to be, to have Hasmadas Hakriya Bedivre Chachamim. May us all be consistent in, in 
reminding ourselves of what life is about, we all, Be'ez Hashem, through that, as, the, as, as I write, and we have as the icon for the, for the chat group, which I love, which I love so much to, to say, because this is, I think, really what it's about. And that is that when a person realizes that motivation and awareness, I'm going to put the awareness part in it, when a person realizes that people often say that motivation doesn't last. How many people, how many people, how many people start off doing something for a week or two or three, they're all excited, and then suddenly it pitters out? That's, that's life. That's normal. That's normal. So people often say that motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. And if a person, awareness doesn't last. Everyone here right now, we could have had Baruch Hashem, beautiful sheer together, and you got a little clarity about something. Guess what, guys? It's not going to last. That's normal. That's why tomorrow morning, a person has to do it again, especially as we're getting closer to the summer. I beg everyone, I beg everyone, your awareness going into the summer will help you through the summer, which will propel you into next year. Your awareness during this time is so crucial. It's so crucial, especially this time in your life, because as you get older and older, your awareness is gonna be robbed <coughs> from more places. Right now, ultimately, you have nothing ultimately to worry about. There's nobody here who ultimately has anything really to worry about except for one thing, getting to know yourself. Getting to know yourself, getting to understand yourself, and getting to be real with yourself. And Hashem should help that we're able to do that. Hashem should have rachamim on us, all the Jewish people. We should be zocha to do this consistently, to remind ourselves of why we're here on this planet. Have a wonderful day, everybody.